In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Hell, kid, it ain't even midnight yet. You're jumping the gun. Tourist shit. Well, every little bit helps. What? It's not like you're gonna use it. What do you expect me to do? Cry over your little broken body? Call the cops? It's not like they're gonna give two craps. Not with everything else that's going down the line. Okay, damn it. Don't say I never did nothing for you. Took you long enough. Yeah, well, I had to put on my face. I wanted to look my best for the big party. Midnight. Welcome to the new millennium. Looks a lot like the old millennium. Where's the ME? She got called away. Assistant should be here with the body bag any time. Poor little kid. He doesn't look more than 12 years old. Some city we live in, huh? Severe internal hemorrhaging. Broken radius, multiple contusions. Somebody beat him with a baseball bat? Nah, something with a sharper edge. Check out the gash across his scalp. He's also got a burn mark on his hand. Definitely from a taser, and definitely fresh. Time of death? Around eight, probably. Body's pretty stiff. No ID, nothing in his pockets. See the ring around the top of his head where his hair is plastered down? Hat hair. He was wearing a cap earlier today. I've heard of kids getting killed for their shoes, but their hats? What about the bag? Empty. Why would he be holding an empty bag? Hey, detectives. I caught this guy hanging around outside the alley. Elijah the Prophet. You know him? Sure. Picked him up at five for disturbing the peace. Found him standing on his shopping cart outside the Schubert, ranting about Y2K. I was just telling the people what the puppet masters don't want them to know. Why don't you tell me what you know about the dead kid over there? I'm the one who reported the murder, okay? I'm the good guy here. Yeah? Well, before I put in for your good citizenship award, you gotta tell me. What did you take from the body? What? Do I look like a grave robber? I didn't take nothing. That cap doesn't fit you so well. It shrank in the wash. Or maybe you swipe it off the kid. All right, all right. He was through using it, wasn't he? Now let me go. I gotta get over to the Lincoln Tunnel and go protect my stockpile from looters. Listen, Elijah, I know you're a prophet, and I'm just a cop, but take it from me. This Y2K bug is a bunch of BS. That's what you government stooges want us to think. But I'm not one of your gullible plebes. I read! Well, there's your problem. And I'll tell you another thing. After your computer-controlled police state comes crashing down, I'll be equipped to survive. In the style to which you've grown accustomed, no doubt. I want you to turn over everything you took off the kid. Now. I'm homeless, officer. Everything I own is on me. So go ahead, search. I seem to recall you saying something about a stockpile. Nobody gets near my stockpile. 
I'm a citizen. I got a constitutional right to my stuff. It's there in the Fourth Amendment, pig. I'll have to read it sometime. But meanwhile, you're still the most likely suspect in this case. Okay, buddy, tell the truth. Did you do this? Kill the kid, you mean? You think I killed the kid and then turned around and reported it? Do I look crazy? <clears throat> so, where were you at 8 o'clock this evening? Enjoying the hospitality of the 5th Precinct. I was in the holding tank. That true? Yeah. He was released about 8.30. Yeah, I guess that clears you. Look, I can take you down to the station right now and let the jackbooted thugs work you over. Or you can take me to your stockpile. Which is it gonna be? I'm not scared of you. Come the stroke of midnight, your police state's gonna collapse like a rotten jack-o'-lantern. I hate to burst your bubble, Mr. Prophet, but uh, it's already after midnight. Huh? I should have known it would be off. Stupid tourist junk. But I don't get it. The system's supposed to be crashing. How come the streetlights are still on? We have this uh, super secret emergency backup system. Damn you guys. You think of everything. Now, should I call the station and have them charge up the cattle prods? No, that won't be necessary. Follow me. There's my stockpile. Stuff I got from the kid's bag is in the bundle on top. Fossey program, Annie get your gun sweatshirt, cabaret mugs, one ticket to Aida. Hey, a credit card receipt. Yeah, well, that ought to get us somewhere. And the credit card people told you right where I was staying? They had a record of the hotel charge, Mrs. Tallis, and the hotel confirmed you're booked through the end of the week. Amazing. You managed to recover my stolen bag when I didn't even report the crime. That's the networked world for you. And here I thought all the networks were going to be down today. For God's sake. We're investigating the murder of the thief, and we'd like to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Of course. As long as I don't miss curtain time. We're catching Dame Edna tonight. Here's a photo of the merchandise we recovered from the shopping cart. Do you see everything that was in your bag? I think so, yes. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's where my ticket to Aida went. I emptied out my handbag looking for that son of a gun. Had to miss the... Wait. Statue of Liberty. Come again? There was a model of the Statue of Liberty, about yay high. It had a marble base with a clock in it. Can you tell us where the bag was stolen? It was on 42nd Street, about... Oh, 4.30. I was just coming from the half-price ticket booth, very pleased with myself. I'd managed to snag the very last ticket to a preview of Aida. I felt a tug, and before I knew what was what, eh, there he was, zipping away with my bag. So you wouldn't be able to ID him? I'm afraid I didn't see his face, just his backside. What brought you to New York? The Millennium, of course. It's not the Millennium back in St. Louis? Well, of course. 
But this is where the action is. My friends and I are part of a theater society, the Looky Loos. We make a Broadway trek once a year, usually in the fall. But this time around, we decided to wait a bit so we could be part of all the fun in Times Square. How come you didn't report the crime? Well, I mean, it was New Year's Eve. I'm sure the police had their hands full just keeping the peace. So it was a courtesy to us? <laughs> well, that and, you know, I'm flying back to St. Louis tonight, and what can I say? I guess I just chalked it up as a loss. Leaving tonight? You're cutting the trip short? I thought you were seeing Dame Edna. Oh, that's right. Uh, today's only Tuesday. You see? <laughs> You've got me all flustered. How was the big party in Times Square? Fabulous. Everything I could have wished. Were you there? No, I had to work. Such a pity. My friends and I managed to push our way in front of the cameras. I even reached out and touched Dick Clark's toupee. Something to tell the grandkids about. I think we're drifting off topic. Mrs. Thomas, where were you at 8 o'clock last night? W was that the time of the murder? Are you asking me for my alibi? If you don't mind. Not at all. This is just like that TV show. Wait till the girls hear about this. Mrs. Tallis. I was... I was at Aida, of course, with the other Looky Loo ladies. Wait, wasn't your ticket one of the things that was stolen? Yes, and it was the last one available. You caught me, detectives. Truth is, since I couldn't get in, I ended up killing time. Just milling about with the New Year's crowds. I, I was waiting for the show to be over so I could meet up with the group and hear about it. I don't think it's going to run long. What makes you think Aida isn't going to run? My friend Gloria Hempel told me it wasn't up to the standard of Sir Elton's earlier work. And she has excellent judgment. Why do you know? She fell asleep in the second act of Steel Pier and it closed a week later. Did you get a good look at the thief? Oh, not really. It all happened so fast. Try to remember. You may have been the last person to see him alive. Oh dear. He was just a boy, poor thing. Brown hair. I think he was wearing a sports jersey of some sort. It had a logo on the front of, you know, that team that plays the game with the ball. You saw the logo on the boy's jersey while he was running away? Oh, well, no, what I mean is, I recognize the team colors. Which are? Y you know, green and gold. What are you not telling us, Mrs. Tallis? Well, I suppose I did see a bit more of the boy than I let on. I got into a bit of a tussle with him before he got away. You got into a tussle? I'm not entirely naive, you know. I'm well aware how rough the streets of Manhattan can be, especially on New Year's Eve. Let's just say I came prepared. May I? I feel just awful about it now, knowing what happened to the boy, you know, after. But, well, it was the instinct of self-preservation kicking in. Well, from the looks of it, your instincts are quite healthy, Mrs. Tallis. Did you go after the thief with any of these weapons? Of course not. He was just a child. I'd never risk hurting a child.
We found a taser burn on the boy's hand. Did you? Yes, I suppose I may have tased him. Uh, not badly, mind you. Just a little mini-tase. Enough to knock him down. Then I grabbed from my bag and we tussled. But he got away. Children are slippery. Mrs. Thomas, how would you like front row tickets to a new drama? It's playing down at the Manhattan Criminal Court building. Now, wait a minute, detective. You don't seriously think... That you're holding something back? Yes. So why don't you hand it over? It's the boy's backpack. I pulled it off him when we were, you know... Tussling. Right. I, I said to him, give me my bag and I'll give you yours. But he just took off without it. I guess he was scared. And why didn't you tell us this at the start? Take a look inside. You'll see his trinkets are considerably more valuable than mine. I figured I got the better deal in the exchange. And it would have made such a great punchline to my story. Quite an assortment we got here. Looks like our victim had a busy day. Yeah, but is any of this stuff going to get us closer to an ID? What's playing on the disc, man? Ricky Martin. That's what comes of living La Vida Loca. You don't notice the sneak thieves. Wonder Woman, where are you? If the kid drew that, he's pretty good. A cry for help? To a superhero? He could at least learn how to spell Wonder Woman. Giles Breton's passion juice. I don't even want to take a whiff of that. Look at this, look at this. It's gotta be what, three grams of crack? No, I think it's methamphetamine. Times are changing. Think the kid smoked it? More likely he was transporting it for somebody. Check it out. Little Gloomy Comics Digest. What's the resale value on that, do you think? Pastrami on Rye. I recognize this sticker. Those are from that deli on 45th and Broadway. And March Handbag. Deborah would kill for one of these. Not that she's ever going to get one on my salary. Top of the World Ticket. Time stamped 2 o'clock on the 25th. So his mom took him to the top of the World Trade Center for Christmas? Or maybe he took himself up so he could collect his own Christmas presents from all the tourists while they were busy gawking out the window. You're a cynic, Curtis, but you're probably right. Hey, what's that? Voucher for a free lunch at the Ninth Avenue Community Center. And it's from a child welfare agency. Good Shepherd. Turn it over. Bingo. Aaron Bauer. Good Shepherd. Name sounds familiar. Catholic Agency? Yeah, I'm calling him right now. This is Detective Ray Curtis of the 27th Precinct. I've got some information about someone, a minor. I believe he may be a client of yours. Name's Aaron Bauer. Yes, old. Wait a minute. That's that guy. What's his name? Montrose. Montrose? Stefan Montrose. He's the director down there. Wrote that book that made a big splash last spring. Um, the Empty High Chair. Sure. I've seen him on talk shows. He's always going on about... About how the child welfare system breaks up families and needs to be reformed from the top down. His agency's been getting tons of good press. And we'll need the boy's case file as well. Thanks a lot. Kid lived with his mother. Caseworker said she could arrange a meeting at the agency in three hours. Well, this ought to be pleasant. That's Aaron, all right. You're the caseworker? From the start. Who are they? 
This is Detective Briscoe and Detective Curtis. Cops? You didn't tell me there was going to be cops here. Sit down, Mrs. Bauer. Mrs. Bauer, there, there's no easy way to say this. I'm afraid your son Aaron is dead. <laughs> nah, he's just messing with you. He's playing possum. He always does that. He makes believe. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bauer. We found his body last night. Severe head trauma. Um, we're afraid. Give me a break, okay? Where is he really? You just want to put him back in City Youth Home. That place is a hellhole. We're trying to figure out who did this to him, and we need you to answer some questions. Yeah. Shoot. Can you tell us when you last saw Aaron? He was gone when I woke up. Oh, probably off at the arcade. I was sleeping late, so sue me, right? <laughs> Last night was New Year's Eve. We know, but when did you see your son? Nine o'clock. That's his bedtime. I tucked him in. Mrs. Bauer, Aaron was killed at eight. I told you, that's just pretend. We found your son's backpack, and that's what led us to you. Some items in it lead us to suspect that he was involved in criminal activities. Bullshit! My Aaron's a good boy. He ain't the type to do drugs. We didn't say anything about drugs. Was there anyone who wished your son harm, who might have beat him? Oh, he's gonna get a beating, I tell you what! He knows damn well what comes of pulling stunts like this. Yeah, he's gonna get it good. Mrs. Bauer, did Aaron have any enemies? Enemies? No! He's... he's just a kid. Wait a minute. You ain't New York City cops at all. No. You're from Russell County. What are you- You bastard! You goddamn kidnappers ain't gonna get away with this! You're not taking him again! I'll kill you! What's going on here? He's my baby! He's my baby! You my don't have baby. to stand for this, Mrs. Bauer. No! <laughs> of course. Stefan Montrose, General Director of Good Shepherd. Would you mind explaining what just happened at my office? You just interfered with a murder investigation. Is Jenna Bauer a suspect? Jenna Bauer is the mother. Oh, I see. Look, detectives. This agency was set up to serve the needs of at-risk families. Those whom the other agencies have abandoned to poverty and addiction. We understand, but do you? You've just come steamrolling in and hit one of my clients with about the most devastating news you can imagine. But instead of leaving her to her grief, you turn around and give her the third degree, like she was a common criminal. Not in my office, detectives. Not here. I'm sorry you don't approve of our technique, Dr. Montrose, but... I'm familiar with the boy's case history. I can answer your questions. What was Mrs. Bauer yelling about when you came in? Something about us being from uh, Russell County, come to take her kid. Mm, can't help you with that one. My knowledge of the Bowers only goes back two years. That's when they arrived in New York. Jenna was living on the street when Good Shepherd first intervened, about six months later. The legal machine had shunted the boy off to City Youth Home. We successfully fought to get mother and son back together. So you see... Jenna Bauer does have some cause for feeling less than friendly toward the police.
Aaron was involved in some shady business. There were drugs in his backpack. Crystal meth. Is there any possibility that he or his mother... No. Our clients don't abuse drugs. Give me some background on Good Shepherd. Did you found this agency? No, Detective. Uh, Good Shepherd has been in existence since 1933. It was founded by the Sisters of Trinity Convent, but their order has been dwindling since Vatican II. It was placed in lay hands in the early 80s, and I was named as director in 95. The church still technically oversees the business, but we're negotiating to purchase it from the Archdiocese. This is all very interesting, but really, shouldn't we stay focused on Aaron Bauer? On the evidence, I'm not so sure Mrs. Bauer should have had custody. Do you always blame the parent for their child's death, detective? Or only when the parent is poor? Now wait a minute. No, you wait a minute. People like Jenna Bauer have had it hard enough in New York just getting by. It doesn't help when the city's guardians look at them like they were moral degenerates. She practically bragged that she beat the kid. You're mistaken, detective. All of our clients are given intensive training in positive parenting. When's the last time the Bowers caseworker paid a visit, do you know? Of course. Miss Schuyler filed a visitation report on Christmas Day. We'll need to see the case file, of course. I'm sorry, that's not possible. This is a murder investigation, Dr. Matros. The files contain some sensitive material from several years ago, in another state. I assure you, nothing remotely relevant to the current tragedy. I thought you didn't know anything about the Bowers before they came to New York. Nothing relevant, I meant. Am I a suspect now, too? How exactly do you train your clients in positive parenting? Why do you ask? Are you looking to brush up on your skills? I just want to know how the training process works. Well, we've got a publication, Children Can't Be Beat. It serves as our course curriculum. New clients meet once a week to work through the lessons and talk about their own experiences as parents. This is all very fascinating, but shouldn't we be discussing the Bauer case? Dr. Montrose, I've got to insist that you follow procedure and turn over the Bauer case file. You should have called ahead, Detective. Procedure dictates that you give us at least two hours advanced warning. I put in a request when I phoned the caseworker. Well, I wasn't informed. Why are you putting up roadblocks? Partner with us here. Sorry, but I know what happens when you partner with the city. They tell you they're only going to see that you follow state guidelines, but it's really a pretext for legal action. They'd love to take Good Shepherd away from me. Well, I thought Good Shepherd was run by the Archdiocese. The same goes double for them. I stay away from all bureaucrats, sacred and secular. You know we can get a court order. You can, but you won't. I've fought the city many times, Detective. It's a powerful adversary, but it hates to look bad in public. I know how to make it look bad. That's how I've bought the space to run my agency my way. Your private kingdom. Call it what you will. So tell me, why did Miss Bauer have such a big problem with cops? You want to hear about Jenna Bauer's problem with cops? Cops killed Aaron's father. Narco squad kicked down their door in the middle of the night. Started tearing the place apart looking for contraband. When Mr. Bauer stepped forward to defend his home, they shot him. 
just another casualty of the drug war. So can you blame Mrs. Bauer for thinking maybe the story was repeating itself? I just had an enlightening conversation with the sheriff of Russell County, Kansas. He told me about the drug bust that killed Aaron's dad. Apparently, they found three pounds of meth in the house. That's a relevant fact. Wonder if it's in the Bowers case file. You really think mom's the killer? I hope my hunch is wrong, but uh, yeah, I do. You better hope your hunch is right. Montrose has himself a big megaphone, and he's been making a lot of noise about how you roughed up his client. What's your plan? Subpoena the boy's files? Maybe. But first, I think we need to pay Mrs. Bauer a visit. Can we get a search warrant, just in case? The press is still giving us grief over the way we fumbled the preppy jogger case. They're going to crucify us if you break into this apartment and come up empty. I hope you know what you're doing. NYPD, open up! Mrs. Bauer, if you don't let us in, we're gonna have to force the door. Oh, man. What a wreck. If we're lucky, she won't come back and make a scene. I wouldn't worry about that. Oh, hell. Dead? Very. I'll call dispatch. Yeah, yeah, this is Briscoe. We're on the scene at the Bauer residence, and we're gonna need an M.E. Uh, looks like a 10109. Yeah, right. Lights don't work. No heat, either. I'm guessing the electricity's been cut off. I wonder how long. Wasn't Good Shepherd supposed to take care of this kind of thing? We've got two victims now. Let's get a better picture of how they died, and how they lived. Looks like mom had a bad habit. Guess we know who Aaron was bringing the candy for. And knowing meth addicts, I can imagine she wasn't too compassionate when he came home without it. Vodka bottle's empty. And so's the bottle of Xanax. I think we found our cause of death. wonder how this fell over. Mrs. Talis's Statue of Liberty clock. Damn it, Lenny. Look, right there. Blood. I can guess whose. The poor kid comes home with this crap and she beats him with it. Somebody paid Jenna Bauer a thousand bucks back in April. New Directions Holding Company. I have a feeling $1,000 checks didn't show up in her mailbox all that often. I wonder how she scored this one. Satisfied? Yeah, I think our killer's gonna miss her date in court. You think she overdosed on purpose? Out of guilt? Maybe. She's a junkie, Ray. Don't hurt yourself trying to figure it out. Well, what do you know? Emmy? Uh-uh. It's the caseworker from Good Shepherd. And she's knocking on the wrong door. Oh, hey, miss! Uh, the party's down here! Detective Briscoe? What are you doing? Oh my god! It's Mrs. Bauer! I'm afraid so. Tell me, did the place look like this on Christmas Day? Well, how should I know? Isn't that the date of your last visit? My last visit? I, I wasn't here on Christmas... Oh... I'd better call the office about this. Dr. Montrose? Y yeah, I'm, I'm at the apartment. There's, there's something you should know. The Bauer case. Isn't it time we close the file on that one? 
I'd love to, believe me, but justice hasn't been done. Poetic justice, maybe. Nobody comes away from this one looking good. Including us. What Detective Curtis is saying is, we think you've got a case against the Good Shepherd Agency. Against Stefan Montrose, you mean? The champion of the downtrodden? Are you saying he's the killer? No, but his agency failed to prevent the deaths. We feel he's responsible. Oh, great. Go ahead, I'm listening. Tell me why we should go after Montrose. Montrose impeded our investigation. He was actively uncooperative? He refused to turn over Aaron Bauer's case files. That's clearly over the line. Sure, but the city chose not to pursue a subpoena at the time. And now it's beside the point. Aaron's mom could never have beat him to death if it weren't for Montrose. He put the weapon in her hands? Montrose pulled the kid out of city youth home and got him back with his mom. And family court signed off on it. True. The whole system's partly to blame for that bad decision. Law says a child welfare agency's got to check in with clients regularly. And Good Shepherd didn't? Apparently not. She drew a blank when we asked about her last visit. And Montrose himself basically admitted that he ignores state procedure. Are we gonna stand by and let our social service agencies go rogue? Jack, we don't have a case against him. Not yet. Let's see what's in those case files. <laughs> 